let's talk about equipment on this crank down series. So there's different sizes of crank downs you could use. You know, they all are lipped baits that are hard that go under. Um, I don't know if I even have any of the line that I use in here, but I don't think you guys need a picture. Uh, you could ask questions in the comments. I'll answer them. Um, I could even put a link up, but I mean, Thontac Warehouse, you can Google it. Bass Pro Shops, all the shit, you know. So anyways, so my baits, Toxic Baits, they come with owner hooks. Me, in general, I really like the owner ST lineup. The ST36, the ST46, and the ST56, also the ST66. And that's 1X, 2X, 3X, 4X. So, in general, I use the 46 and 56 more than I do the 36. The 36 I use on, I don't know, small baits sometimes, you know. To be honest with you, um, the Gamagatsu Bronze, regular Gammy Bronze round bins are probably my go-to 1X hooks. They have a little longer shank. Um, very good hooks. Um, I use owners because I think collectively and generally this is the best stock hook that I could put on there across the board for make the most people happy. So, gammies are good. Um, the Gammy 2X Black Nickel, they make those up to 1X, uh, 1-aught. Those are 2X hooks. Those are really good hooks. A little, a little bit longer shank also. Um, those are some great hooks. I order my hooks from owner by the thousand. Um, they're, they, they have my favorite hook in the lineup. It's about all I use. So that's why I stick that way. But I've also, I, I know some people use Mustad triple grips. I use Mustad flipping hooks a lot. Um, I don't see why they wouldn't be good hooks. There's also a Gamagatsu short shank EWG treble hook. I think it's pretty cool. I've used that before. That's a good one. There's new owners. ST35, I think, is the split one. They have this... I don't know. They have the Zoe wires. They have all different ones, right? Um, the only hooks I will not use on my baits are cutting point hooks. The ones that you see turned in. The owners that have the cutting points with the beak turned in. Um, and it's not just from my own experience. It's from talking to anglers that are far better than me, you know, um, by a hundredfold. And having the same opinion without even talking about it. You know, we didn't even have to hype each other up about they're not good. Like, they just, if you throw them enough, they just lose fish. Um, it, I, I know that people won't agree with me, but I've thrown them just about only these for 10 years. Um, so, even though they might work for other people, uh, you know, I can't speak on it. For me, they have failed. For professional anglers that I've talked to, they failed. So, they, they, it's just a cutting point, right? So it just slices and dices. You have these big fish moving, and it gets in the soft part. It just slices those. That's why you don't use them for like tuna and stuff. I'm assuming I've had many people tell me back in the day before I even went tuna fishing, like, yeah, I won't use that because it just keeps cutting a hole. Um, I don't know. I don't know how true any of that is, but I know that it does slice and dice bass face. So I stick to the needle points. Anyways, if I had to choose one hook to fish, it would be the ST56. You can see it there on that hook. Um, this is the owner, size one. I use them on my micro mink. Um, it doesn't have the full EWG bend, the, the points vertical, but I don't lose fish on these very, very rarely. I very rarely lose them out. I very rarely lose fish on this hook. This is my favorite hook. Um... If I could recommend everyone to use a hook, that's the one it would be. They only make it up to one aught for some reason. I don't know, but great hook. Also, I don't have any here, but the ST46 is a silver hook. It's a 2X. It, it's like uh, what comes on the 250. Those are badass hooks, too. I really like those hooks. Uh, the silver has never made a difference. I think it looks good on shad color baits. Go ahead and uh, don't, don't worry about that. But... I think it's hard to go wrong with this hook, the ST56 3X. 
you know, just use the hook you're confident in, I guess, when it comes in, but that's my recommendations. On my baits, I use Worth Split Rings. They don't sell retail. Um, you can get them from me. They're made in the USA. I put stainless steel on there now because I thought people wanted them. I think I'm going to switch to zinc. Um, or uh, not zinc, to, to nickel-plated spring steel. It tests stronger. Most people don't need stainless rings. Um, I don't know how it goes. I have so many stainless rings. They look exactly the same, but I have so many stainless rings, it'll be a while before I made the switch. But they're, Worth makes great products, great split rings. They're not owner hyperwired. They don't have the flat. Um, I actually like the smooth, rounder rings more than the flat rings. Before that, I used owner hyperwires. Those are really good um, split rings. Sampo makes split rings, you know. I think uh, if you don't know what to use, you could use, if you find Worth, you could use Worth uh, Hyperwire, hard to beat, you know. Um, those are what I kind of stick with. Um, just use a heavy duty one. Stainless steel split rings have a tendency to stay open a little bit because they're softer. Stainless has nickel in it instead of on it. Um, so sometimes you might run into that with cheaper stainless. I would try to get a decent ring. Um, but uh, in general, I mean, if you have questions, you could just stick with the stuff they have at the store, you know. Um, Hyperwire is the best choice for swim baits, I'd say, if you're not going with the heavy duty ring like these worths that I wrote. Um, but that's pretty straightforward. The debate on the front, the snap, it's up to you. My recommendation with the snaps, use a proven snap like a decoy egg snap. Um, some people like the tactical snaps um, that you slip on. Can't speak for it. Um, seems like it would slip out. When I looked at what mus what snap to use, I looked at what the musky guys use. The musky guys seem to have a consensus. They like the stay lock stamp, uh, snaps. That's why that's what I put in my packs, my game day packs. Stay lock snaps are pretty strong. My recommendation would just be like, after you open it or close it a few times, you know, it's going to weaken. I mean, I don't even know if that's good. I just throw mine away. Or just leave it on the front of the bait like a split ring and tie to it. The advantage you'll get with the snap sometimes is uh, sometimes it'll make it run a little more true with a split ring. Sometimes you'll get them, they bind on the nose like this sometimes or whatever, and it'll cause it to run to the side. A quick snap of the rod will bring it back straight. But with the split ring, you know, sometimes you might see that. Snaps, uh, they could make it run a little more true, I guess, because they have the shorter radius. I'd like the ring because it's a little more erratic. Um, these are very minimal observations. It's not a huge difference, but um, just use a good one. I don't know. I just, I use the rings because they're on my baits. So I just use the ring. I, I also have snaps. Most of the time I use a ring. So, I, you know, don't put too much into that either. I wouldn't put too much into a ring or a snap. Just whatever you prefer. Time direct. Go ahead. You can tie direct. If you tie direct, what it will do is kind of tighten up the wiggle. You won't get as much head, you know, it'll it'll tighten the action. In the wintertime, you could tie direct, have a tighter action, maybe a better presentation for the fish. So, um, so that goes through the, the hardware on the baits. Um, the only, you know, modifying baits, I, I did a little bit on it. You can see here I have the uh, lead wrapped around the hook shank. You know, that helps it stay down a little bit. You know, um, you could put the lead behind the bill. That'll deaden the head shake a little bit. If you put it there, if you put it here, it kind of helps the head shake a little bit. Um, there's no right way to modify a bait. You know what I'm saying? Just, uh, I just say try to do stuff. Try to add weight. I'll even put a bullet sinker on the front of the bait. It still wiggles. It's not a big deal. Um, if you just want to get the bait, you know, for the presentation that's needed that day, and I'll go into that. So let's talk about rods. I've been through a million rods. If you look at some of the old videos, I won't take them down because I'm not that kind of person, but I did some reviews on spiralites. Um, I don't really rock spiralites anymore. I still use some of the rods I have on deck. I've kind of moved away um, from those, not because it was a bad product, but you know, other reasons. Uh, I do feel that there's better product on the market in, in the small rod market. Um, 
So the 8.6 Spiralite Defiant is a great rod though. I can't deny that, that's a, that's a really good rod. But in general, I'm out here with my stuff. I've always rocked with Ben at Lowdown Customs. You can see it right there. This is the rod he built for me. He knows I'm all about that gold. Um, this is his medium heavy workshop line. So it's a production rod, but I would lump it into like a custom. Uh, if you're if you're if you're willing to spend the money, that's a great way to go. So I, I believe it's with shipping. It's in the it's in the mid three hundreds, maybe three seventy. I don't know, you know. But low down customs. Uh, workshop series, my favorite series. Great rod. It's parabolic down. Two thirds or you know the last third is stiff. I should say you know or you know halfway. It's hard to. It's hard to explain it. So it kind of has a dynamic action. It, you'll see a little bit of tip and then it bends down, but it doesn't bend down to the handle, which I prefer. I don't prefer a fully per parabolic rod most of the time. I like to have a little bit of back section. But um, so if you're willing to spend the money, you want to support um, Ben and LBC, none of us would be mad. That's the homie. He's been, he's been doing it for a long, long time. He, I'm pretty sure he was offering, he was the custom builder. He started offering production rods many, many moons ago before anybody else was offering them. So the, his blanks are, are his. Um, I'm pretty sure the blanks are made in the USA for him on that, you know. It's no big deal either way. But, um, you know, the Workshop Series is a great, 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 great option. I have four or five of those and old customs I've had forever. So I've always been with Ben. If you could go that route, that's great. I have uh, some rods from Justin at Revelation Rods. Um, he built a little custom stick for me, a little short one. Um, cool. He builds on, on American-made blanks. Uh, Tapian or Taipan, I don't know how it's pronounced. But uh, he's a great option. Cam at Moam. I got a, 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 build, a build from him many years ago. Uh, great rod. F5, I guess, you know, uh, those guys are building rods that I've heard great stuff about. I've never touched them, so, you know, I can't go in-depth on that or give my full recommendation, but there's other stuff out there on the web. I prefer LDC. Um, so, besides that, there's a lot of good production rods on the market um, on the cheaper route, if you're just getting into it. Maybe the Daiwa series, uh, Kuma series. Akuma's been making rods for ever, the Guide Select series and stuff. Um... Sometimes they get a bad rap. I have a lot of Akuma rods now. They're they're great. You know, you know when you're making tens of thousands of rods, every once in a while you might have a product that slips through. But Akuma is great at support. If you have any issues with with a, an Akuma product, very rarely do you, are they hesitant or anything to reach out and make sure you're taken care of. So, um, I but I can't speak on them. I haven't fished any of theirs. Uh, the Guide Selects I fished a long time ago. They don't make that model anymore. Um, Daiwa rods are, you know, I love Daiwa stuff. Um, but so my new one that I got, that's actually my new favorite small bait rod. It's brand new. It's for this style bait. Too. I've been throwing this one on it. This is three and a half ounces. I think this is the max for a hard bait. I mean, I know this is the max for a hard bait. Even this one, because it has a larger lip, pulls real hard. Um, but it's this I-Rod Kaimana Inshore. And this is the 794. It's like the Popo Joe's or something. <laughs> I tried to. It, uh, it's like Joe's bag stick or something. Uh, made for like spotties and stuff like that, right? At Fred Hall, I was able to acquire one of these. T from Fish All took us out graciously. And uh, Nick from Cast and Crank Podcast, those guys are dope. Took us out on the harbor, stuck a pretty good calico on this thing. But to be honest with you, I was, I'm, it handled the fish amazingly, but it's so balanced. Like the blank, um, you can see the handle length is ample. I think it's, it should be 14 inches. I, I haven't measured 13, 14, whatever. I think it's 14. It's actually the same as the eight foot one. You can see them both here, both great rods, but, um, I just can't get enough of throwing this rod, to be honest with you. Just the, it, I think it's the balance. Whatever it is, I feel like I could throw a frog on this, but like I, I am going to throw a frog on this. 
but when I pick up these baits and up to three ounce glide baits, it's my new favorite rod. I've stuck some small fish on it. I'm gonna stick some big fish on it, hopefully. I'm gonna have some bad luck this year, but um, if you can get a hold of one of these, the 794 uh, Joe's Mag Stick, or I'm bad at that stuff, but it's a 794 Coastal. I don't know. Best, best taper, balanced rod. Plus, I mean, it's badass. You can see all the shit on it. Best rod I've acquired in a while. And the retail price is ridiculous. Be cheap. And the other rod I've been using for my larger stuff is this Kaimana. This one is the 804 Medium Heavy Moderate. Now... My 100% honest opinion for me, it bends, it, this is a truly parabolic rod. It's called moderate. Sometimes they shut off. This one bends all pretty far down the, the blank. Now, I'm not saying this in a negative way. I love this. Like you can see if you look at my Instagram, I just caught a, a striper on 250, a, a, on a depth 250. It's rated to six ounces. Uh, glide baits, I like a parabolic softer rod. Handled stripers like nothing. You know what I mean? It's made to, to pull these saltwater fish out. So I'm liking this so far. I've caught some good fish on it. Um, I don't throw up to six ounces usually on it. I'm throwing up to like four, four and a half, five. I think because for me, um, the parabolic rod, I like it. I don't like it to be fully loaded up because I roll cast and pitch a lot. Um, but overall, I mean, this is on my deck every day. I have, I have probably... 15, 20 swim bait rods, and this is the one I'm using. I don't have to use this. Um, I just prefer to. Great. Uh, um, I'm pleasantly surprised with the iRod series. I never really rocked with it before. Um, I, I met Matt at Fred Hall. Those guys are really in tune with fishermen, with what the fishermen are doing. Um, they care about what you have to say, not, you know... I mean, not that they don't care about what KVD or somebody like that has to say, KVD or someone. They just listen. They're anglers. Matt's an angler. He's a, you know, everybody knows who Matt Newman is. Or if you don't, you need to watch some some videos and some, like, read a book. But anyways, those are great choices right now. Um, I, I don't use Dobbins, so I can't recommend a Dobbins. There's tons of people that do. I'm sure that's a great way to go. Spend the most amount of money you can. But you don't have to spend a ton. Especially, like, when these Kamana series are under $200. I think they're under $150. I'm, I'm so bad, I don't even know. But definitely go check them out. Um, they also have the Bailey Swims and the Junior Swims in multiple series. You can get uh, you can get the Genesis series for a lower price point. Um, or you can get the Air Series, which is a higher modulus blank for a higher price point. I haven't used those either, so I'm not going to tell you what to do with that. I don't, you know, you know how I do. Um, trying to think of a rod that somebody else uses that, but I can't right now. So for my recommendations, I would say stick to that. You can't go wrong with proven stuff like that. Um, and for the reels. So you can see here, I got my old Lexa 300. I'm a Daiwa guy, 100%. They support their customers a ton. Um, and then right on the next rod, I have my Z200, you know, JDM style reel, expensive reel, high dollar. Um, what's on the next one? I don't even know. Oh, another Z. This is the 2020. This is a JDM. Um, so... But I also use the regular Tatula 200s. Um, I don't, I love the, I really like the Lexas. Uh, you can modify them a little bit, add a bearing, take the bushing out from under the rod cap. You can get them on eBay. Um, put a bearing, you put the bearing from the side plate where the bushing goes, add a different bearing to, to the spool, you know, and you're good to go. Um, it's a cheap modification. Um, but you don't have to do that at all if you don't want to. It's just uh, a way to add a bearing to the reel. But, Lexa 300, um, Tatula 200, just because it doesn't say HD on it doesn't mean it won't handle your swim baits. The 150s still work. 
uh, you know, all the Calcutta series is proven. People really like the Trank series. Um, I like the slower ratio options. When you're looking at gear ratios, make sure you look at inches per turn. Um, I think when you're cranking down, a slower ratio is going to help you. If you can take it and get a 5 to 5 to 1, 5.5 to 1, and actually be able to fish that, I think you'll get more bites. Um, 6, 3 to 1 is, 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 what I, is what I recommend throwing. Like any over... If you're throwing a seven to one, you're really gonna have a hard time slowing down enough. I don't care what anyone says. I know everybody is, you know, but just from being on the water thousands and thousands of days, you know, when you have that fast ratio reel, especially with these hard baits, it, it's just impossible to to creep it slow enough. Cause you know, I, we'll go through that in the next video about the presentation, but you know, you wanna have that option to, to move it slowly. So, um, the 200 series is, is basically the size that you could get away with for up to like four ounces. After that, I would say you want to move up to a 300 series reel, whether it be uh, another good option is the Luna, the Daiwa Luna, a round reel. You can go with that. I've heard good things about the Akuma Komodos now. Um, I know they've caught some big fish. Uh, they have a reputation for being rough. I don't know. I haven't used them, but I've seen this couple guys have them tuned and they're just they fall in love with them. So, um, you know, I can't recommend those, but don't be closed minded. If you think you might like it, give it a buzz. I mean, it's, it's fishing. We can't win every time with every purchase, but I can tell you for sure that if you go with a Daiwa Alexa, a Daiwa Tatula, um, you're going to be in the wheelhouse. A Daiwa Luna for the round reels. Um, I've really, I used to be a round reel guy, still am, but I really like the the Tatulas and the and the Lexas. They're great reels. They're easy, cheap. You know, they last, stand up to shit. So, um, and then lastly, line. There's a debate. Use what you want to use. You're, you you'll be fine if you use a fluorocarbon. Use like Sunline, for example. I don't know fluorocarbons well. I know that line of of, of fluorocarbons. You don't want to use like Sniper. You want to use like a shooter line, and I've learned this over the years the hard way. Like you want to have, if, if you could get a line that has some stretch in it, it's going to help you. The sniper I've had snap off, um, and I love sniper. You know, Sunline sniper if you're not familiar. Um, but but you want to use the the proper fluorocarbon. Um, I think Butch Brown talks about fluoro. I would listen to him. He knows. Uh, to be honest with you, the way I fish, I, I fish Copoly most of the time. So use a fluorocarbon that's not going to snap you off, 20 to 25 pound. Um, match it with your rod. If you're using too stiff of a rod for a lure, a lot of times, and there's no flex, you'll get a crease in your line. And with fluorocarbon, that's exaggerated. So you got to remember that. If you want to use a thin line, make sure your rod matches your line so that you're not overstressing that section of line where you cast um, without a tip you're really putting a crease and, and stress on that um, if there's no tip flex but besides that i use p line pf copoly it's the original it's thin um it has a little bit of stretch not so much stretch i like the blue color it's never failed me it's knock on plastic you know i'm sure everything fails um i've heard great things about cxx i used to use berkeley big game um, big game has a lot of stretch to it. If you're a stiff rod guy, you might want to go with big game. It saves big fish next to the boat. Big game's a great line to have on because it really forgives on those trebles. Um, Iser line, the triple X Iser, good line, great line. Um, Strin, clear blue original is great line. That is some of the toughest line out there. You don't even hear about that stuff anymore. Um, but in general, those, so I would recommend a copolymer. That's just what I feel uh, performs best. It doesn't have a ton of stretch, but it does have some give, which is good with treble hook baits. But also, when you're setting the hook on a treble hook bait, you don't want all the stretch in the world because, believe it or not, when they bite this big bait, those fish are strong. You have to move that bait in their mouth. So if you don't want to just ease into them on the set you you want to make sure that 
once they have it in there, that you're getting an ample pull from here. You don't want to be back here on your hook set with no leverage. You want to keep the pull going, especially if you can get that fish to turn away from you to drive those hooks home. Um, so my recommendation would be to go with Copoly or a low stretch line, a low stretch mono. Um, if you could do fluorocarbon, go ahead. I like to re-spool a lot and I tie baits a lot. So I go through spools fast. That's why I don't use fluoro. It's like I'm retying, retying, retying. And I don't know. I'm cheap, I guess. I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't fish soft baits and stuff. I fish covers. So, so yeah, that, I mean, that's, that was the, that, that was a long version of what I was trying to keep short. But in general, like all those things, those are my recommendations. But you could pick this up with the flippancy. You can see, like I recommended with this Kaimana 794, it's rated half ounce to two ounces. It's it's rated like a flipping stick. You could take this rod, you could take this lure, and uh, and just tie it on and go for it. But if you're trying to get into and have a specific rod, there's a difference. Flipping sticks have short handle. This has a nice long handle, balanced. It's made to do the job you're trying to do. So, I mean, I got to be honest with you. This rod is badass, dude. 794, Kaimana, Coastal. Uh, I can't wait to start popping these, these fish on there, dude. Wade and Crank, even this. It's a, it's a pleasure to throw. The balance is incredible. So, if you have a chance to pick one of these up, do it. All right, see you on the next one.